Good evening in Salam Malaysia Madani. I'm Shuhaid Arifin and you're watching News at 10. Making the headlines tonight. PM wants evaluation task to be returned to civil servants. No postponement of 2023-2024 academic session in flood-hit states. A raise in the civil servants' salary scheme will be the government's priority when the country's income has improved. At the monthly assembly with the staff of the Prime Minister's Department in Putrajaya today, Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim said, in the current situation, the increase in the salary scheme could not be implemented this month. Insyaallah, hari Kamis dalam penggulungan, bagi pihak rakan-rakan di Menteri, saya akan gulung bagi pihak... Uh, JPM dan kewangan selain daripada yang telah dibuat oleh Menteri-Menteri saya akan berikan beberapa gambaran yang sangat positif, yang baik ya, dari segi hasil kita, dari segi pendapatan negara dari segi jumlah pelaburan yang real ya. Datuk Seri Anwar also wants the task of evaluation to be returned to civil servants and for dependence on consultants to be reduced under his administration. He said this can be done with the civil servants providing research recommendations and findings for decision making as opposed to dependency on third parties unless there was a lack of subject experts in the government. Bukan, bukan saya, saya tidak menganggap uh, pengambilan konsultan ataupun peguam swasta itu tidak penting. Tapi saya nak tunjukkan bahawa uh, tingkat uh, kepakaran, keterampilan kita itu kalau kita garap, latih, dia juga akan berikan ruang kepada yang muda. Sebab itu saya beritahu kepada Tan Sri KSN, bukan saya menentang pengambilan terlalu banyak konsultan tapi uh, seperti mana yang pernah saya tekankan, khidmat uh, dalam kerajaan dulu dan 8 tahun di Kementerian Kewangan. Saya saksikan uh, kompetensi pegawai itu ada maknanya kalau dia perlu satu dua konsultan bantu itu munasabah eh? tetapi dia sendiri memimpin dan memampu uh, dan dan mem, uh, apa, memandu dan mengemudi uh, projek itu dan uh, barisan yang pejabat awam yang lebih muda uh, akan mendapat pendedahan sangat baik Referring to the success of the Minister of Finance Incorporated and 1MDB in reaching a settlement regarding their dispute with International Petroleum Investment Company IBIC and ABA Investments PJS, the Prime Minister attributed it to, among others, efforts of civil servants such as those at the Attorney General's Chambers and the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission. Meanwhile, Dato Sri Anwar said, based on his observations, it was found that the government's machinery at the federal and state levels had acted swiftly in handling the flood situation in Johor, thus proving the credibility of civil servants in managing disaster situations without having to wait for instructions. He expressed the hope that the momentum would be maintained by civil servants in the eventuality of a flood disaster in the future. The Prime Minister also reminded the implementing agencies to expedite the implementation of flood mitigation projects without having to wait for the 2023 budget to be approved. Saya payah tunggu kelulusan uh, belanjawan sepenuhnya kerana belanjawan telah diluluskan sebahagiannya pada bulan Disember. Disember sudah, jadi boleh teruskan. Jangan tunggu. Macam tebatan banjir dan sebagainya. Jalan. Ya. Tapi ikut proses. Jangan lagi jalan runggi, runding terus jadi lunding terus. Lunding itu dimasuk ke lain. Jadi runding ikut tender tapi fast track. At a separate event today, the Prime Minister stressed that the government is giving aid and assistance directly to those in need, including flood victims, not necessarily throughout the respective members of parliament. Citing the 50 million ringgit flood aid for Johor as an example, Dr. Suri Anwar, who is also finance minister, said the aid was meant for the flood victims, not the state. 
tengok macam di Johor 50 juta diberi kepada yang memerlukan tentu kita selaras dengan negeri tapi tidak kepada negeri peruntukan parlimen walaupun belum sampai kepada ahli parlimen dia sampai ke bawah He said this in response to Pago Member of Parliament Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin's call for the government to allocate at least 300 ring, 300,000 ringgit to every elected representative, including from the opposition, to enable them to channel immediate aid and assistance to flood victims in their areas. Earlier, Datuk Seri Anwar attended the National Craft Day 2023 exhibition themed Ini Craft Malaysia at the Craft Complex in Kuala Lumpur. The exhibition will run until 13th March with a target of 16 million ringgit sales and 185,000 visitors. The recent issue over the quality of food supply due to flood victims at relief centres arose because there is limited supply of perishable products. Women, Family and Community Development KPWKM Minister Datuk Seri Nancy Shukri said the ministry sought an explanation from the caterers involved and they complained that it was difficult to find fresh supplies and this had affected the quality of the food. Uh, dalam keadaan macam ni uh, kita lihat uh, memang memang uh, kitera tu mengaku ada uh, kekurangan dari segi kualiti makanannya sebab beliau susah nak dapat bahannya dia terpaksa pergi jauh jadi sebab itu kami bukan nak menyebelahi kitera sebab kita pun simpati dengan mangsa banjir dahlah tak dapat masak sendiri jadi dia pergi jauh dan bila datang uh, terhad dia punya makanan tu Speaking to reporters after visiting flood victims at Sekolah Kebangsaan Kota Dalam Relief Centre in Batu Pahat today, she said meals in retort packaging would be distributed to flood victims on their first day at the relief centre and later it was left to them if they wish to work together to prepare the meals. She added that the ministry has no problem if the flood victims at the relief centre decide to hold a gotong royong to prepare food as the social welfare department would be helping to manage the relief centres. There will be no postponement of the 2023-2024 academic school session scheduled for 19th and 20th March in flood-hit states. Education Minister Fadil Nasidik said if the works to repair schools affected by the floods could not be carried out before those dates, students would be given the choice to attend classes of by home based teaching and learning PDPR. Speaking to reporters after visiting the temporary relief centre at Sekolah Kebangsaan Sri Bali in Segama today, Fadlina said based on the report received from the technical side and from the engineers, the affected schools not only suffered damage but there was also damage to assets including teachers' desks and furniture. Rosakan sangat serius um, dan memerlukan penyelenggaraan segera, pemulihan segera kerana ia melibatkan keselamatan anak-anak kita di sekolah. Um, jadi kita uh, akan mulakan segera uh, dari segi penurunan um, dana penyelenggaraan uh, dan juga kerja-kerja pembaik pulih uh, supaya kita dapat segerakan um, proses ini sebelum um, mereka mula persekolahan. Fadilina said that the ministry will also give a flexibility to affected students to come to school wearing normal clothes. Coming up, Malaysia inflation rate dropped to 3.7%. Stay tuned. All Majlis Amanah Rakyat Mara Educational Institutions need to review the course syllabus that has been prepared to ensure it is in line with current developments. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Suri Dr. Mazid Hamidi said he also wants to see that all programme learning outcomes are evaluated and improved to ensure they are on the right track. Dr. Sri Dr. Mazahir, who is also Rural and Regional Development Minister, said among the steps that can be taken include collaborating with professional accreditation bodies and multinational companies here and overseas. Saya juga ingin melihat semua program pengajian yang akan menjadi hal tujuh baru oleh pensyarah-pensyarah dan tenaga yang mengajar di institusi pengajar ini saya harap terus ditambah baik terus digilap 
agar anak-anak kita biarpun kebanyakan mereka ini berasal dari perdesaan sama seperti saya. He said this when officiating at the opening of the first session of 2023 Mara Education Institution's convocation ceremony at the World Trade Center today. He also said Mara needs to be a driver for the entrepreneurial ecosystem and multiply efforts to produce entrepreneurs among students with a focus on entrepreneur development, job creation and business opportunities that will in turn create wealth for the people and the country. Malaysia's inflation rate has decreased from 3.8% in December 2022 to 3.7% in January 2023. Economy Minister Rafi Ziramli said this is very encouraging because it demonstrates that Malaysia has succeeded in slowing the rate of price increases in face of global supply chain constraint and seasonal demand spikes. Jadi dalam keadaan kita sekarang, dia beri kelegaan kepada kita kerana pada masa berbanding dengan tahun lepas pun kenaikan itu ada tetapi mereda. Tapi dari bulan ke bulan pun menunjukkan bahawa dia tidak dia berada ke arah stabil ataupun insya Allah kalau kena dengan segala dasar dan uh, um, program yang kerajaan usahakan, insya Allah dia akan mula malah menurun selepas ini. Eh. He added that the month-to-month -month increase in inflation for January 2023 is 0.2%, the same proportion as the previous month. Rafizi also pledged to keep food prices affordable by implementing a multi-pronged strategy that affects the entire food chain, from raw materials to food consumed outside the home. He said initiatives such as Medi Rahmah and Inisiatif Pendapatan Rakyat not only provide consumers with a low-cost option, but also encourage a fresher competition in the market. Yang Dipertuan Agong Sultan Abdullah Riayatuddin Al Mustafa Billah Shah today witnessed the signing ceremony of the Memorandum of Understanding MOU regarding cooperation to improve the efficiency of environmental management and sustainability in Cameron Highlands. The memorandum were inked between Cameron Highlands District and Land Office and Cameron Highland Development Corporation (PKCH) with the Malaysian Space Agency (MISA), Aerodyne Group, and National Water Research Institute of Malaysia (NARIM). The memorandum with the MISA is an initiative to strengthen land use monitoring in Cameron Highlands through satellite surveillance technology and efficient data sharing between the agencies. The one signed with Nahrim is for a collaboration to improve sediment management efficiency through the use of Nahrim Environmental Dredging System NEDS. The use of the system is expected to bring about a positive impact on efforts to protect and preserve water resources in Cameron Highlands. The MOU with Aerodyne on the forehand is an effort to improve monitoring methods for compliance in the implementation of projects in the highland areas by optimizing the use of drone technology. The high-tech solution encompassing space, land and water is believed to be able to improve the quality of the management of the Cameron Highlands district beside the fact that the high-tech initiative is much more effective and cost-effective compared to the conventional methods. At least nine paramilitary troops killed in suicide bomber attack. More about that in our foreign segment. At least nine paramilitary troops were killed and seven others injured in a suicide bombing in Pakistan's southwestern Balochistan province on Monday. The bombing, the latest in a string of attacks on security forces, took place near Sibbi district targeting a vehicle of Balochistan constabulary, a paramilitary force. The suspected bomber rammed his motorbike into a truck carrying paramilitary troops who were deputed for the security of a traditional annual festival commonly known as CB Mala, which culminated on Sunday. The death toll is expected to rise as several injured are stated to be in critical condition. Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif, who is currently in Qatar, condemned the mobbing, directing the security agencies to use all possible means to bring the culprits to justice. No group has so far claimed responsibility for the attack. 
The province is also a key route of the $64 billion China-Pakistan Economic Corridor project, which aims to connect China's strategically important northwestern Xinjiang province to Balochistan's Gawada port through a network of roads, railways and pipelines for cargo, oil and gas transportation. Representatives for South Korea's forced labor victims disagree with the government's plan to compensate the people forced to work under Japan's 1910-1945 occupation of Korea through its public foundation. The director of the civic group that works with forced labor victims, Kim yong hwan blamed the South Korean government's low posturing stance towards Japan that led to what they consider a humiliating resolution. Under the government's plan, South Korea would compensate former forced laborers through an existing public foundation funded by private sector companies. Some of the 15 plaintiffs plan to reject the plan, setting the stage for potential continued legal battles. Relations between South Korea and Japan plunge to their lowest point in decades after South Korea's Supreme Court in 2018 ordered Japanese firms to pay reparations to former forced laborers. Fifteen South Koreans have won such cases, but none have been compensated. Meanwhile, South Korea's presidential office said the government's decision to compensate victims was based on a determination for future-oriented South Korea-Japan relations. After the announcement, the trade winners of both countries said discussions will quickly begin to return export curbs to their pre-July 2019 state. A World Trade Organization WTO dispute forces sparked by a complaint against Japan, which imposed curbs on high-tech materials to South Korea, will also be halted. In July 2019, Japan imposed curbs on material used in smartphone displays and chips amid a decades-old row with a soul about South Koreans who said they were forced to work under Japan's 1910-1945 occupation. Taiwan Defense Minister Chiu Ko Cheng today warned that the island has to be on the alert this year for a sudden entry by the Chinese military into area close to its territory amid rising military tensions across the Taiwan Strait. Answering questions from lawmakers in parliament, Chiu said the Chinese People's Liberation Army, PLA, might find excuses to enter areas close to Taiwan's territorial air and sea space as the island steps up its military exchanges with the United States, much to Beijing's IRE and that China might use force in the future. Taiwan has avowed to exercise its rights to self-defense and counterattack if Chinese armed forces entered its territory. China claims self-governed Taiwan as its own and has not renounced the use of force to bring the island under Chinese control if needed. The country last year staged unprecedented military exercises around Taiwan in reaction to a visit to the island by then U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Asked by a lawmaker if the United States was planning to store some of its military equipment in Taiwan, Chu said such discussions were ongoing but declined to elaborate. Up next, Malaysia lost national golf legend Darren Moore in our sports segment. We begin our sports segment with a very sad news. Former national professional golfer M. Ramaya died at the age of 67 at the hospital Chancellor Tuanku Muris UKM in Chiras this morning. Ramaya, who had played in 13 editions of the World Cup, fell ill since December last year before being diagnosed with stage 4 spinal cancer. Ramaya breathed his last at 10.23 a.m. this morning after he was admitted to HCTM two days ago due to shortness of breath. Meanwhile, Minister of Youth and Sports Hannah Yoh in a Facebook post also expressed sadness over Ramaya's passing. In the post, Hannah described Ramaya as a bright star in golf and how his passing left a major impact to Malaysia. She also extended her condolences to the late family. Ramaya leaves behind his wife and a daughter. 
According to the National Athletes Welfare Foundation, Yakib Chairman, Datuk Nurul Arifin Abdul Majid, his family will receive death benefit of 3,000 ringgit in addition to covering his medical bills at the hospital. All right, moving on to Premier League race. Cody Gapo, Dari Nunes and Mohamed Salah all netted a brace as Liverpool shrugged off a season of underwhelming performance to thrash Manchester United 7-0 at Anfield in their Super Sunday clash this morning. A week after a research in United claimed their first trophy since 2017 by winning the Carabao Cup and amid talk of a title push, they were blown away either side of halftime as Liverpool recorded their biggest ever margin of victory in the next fixture. Gapo's superb finish from Liverpool's first attempt on target gave the host the lead at the break. Within five minutes of the restart, it was all over as the contest with Darwin making it 2-0 with a header before a lightning Liverpool counter-attack led by Salah ended with Gapo finishing in style for 3-0. With United in disarray and losing their heads, Salah got in on the act to rifle in his sides a fourth in the 66th minute and Nunes then sent a header past helpless goalkeeper David Gea in the 75th minute. Salah rubbed salt into United wounds with a close-range effort to score his 129th Premier League goal for the club. Roberto Firmino then came off the bench to send Klopp's side into seventh heaven, although by that stage most of United's followers had headed for the exits. This is the club's worst defeat since their 70 loss to Wolverhampton Wanderers back in 1931. Liverpool, whose golden era seemed to be in decline, were looking to redeem their former glory in the match. Yeah, a freak result, top performance, um, really top performance um, from the start. I thought um, the way we started the game was really special, it was one of the best. For a long, 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 long time we were there, we were aggressive, but we played football, we were calm in the right moments, super lively, super active. Meanwhile, United under Eric Ten Hag appeared to be on the rise and were on a hot streak following their win in Carabao Cup last week, their first silverware since 2017. But this is, uh, we had so many good results in the last weeks, months. Um, so good, so many good performances. Um, yeah, and this was a really bad performance. And then, and then I talk about the second half because first half, I, I think this team, uh, our team, played really well. Uh, played really decent. Liverpool's record a 7-0 route killed off any hopes United had of mounting a title charge in the last months of the season while hoisting Liverpool into fifth spot and firmly backed in the hunt for a top-four finish that had looked unlikely earlier in the season. In tennis, Nicolas Jerry claimed victory on home turf at the Chilean Open after putting down Argentina's Thomas Martin Echeverri 6-7-7-6-6-2. The victory is only the second-ever tour-level title of Jerry's career since turning pro in 2014, having also won on clay at the 2019 Bastard Open in 2 hours and 47 minutes. The former world number 38 had more firepower than his opponent and that proved critical. Jerry crushed a backhand winner to earn two break points in the first game of the third set and then punished a forehand to seize the lead. Novak Djokovic was, has formally withdrawn from the draw of the Indian Wells tournament, an indication that the world number one's application for a COVID-19 vaccine waiver to enter the U.S. might have failed. Pardon? The Serbian, who is one of the most high-profile athletes unvaccinated against the virus, applied to the U.S. government last month for special permission to play at ATP Masters event at Indian Wells and Miami. The organizers in a statement said, with Djokovic withdrawal, Nikolas Basilashvili moves into the field. The U.S. currently bars unvaccinated foreigners from entry into the country, a policy that is expected to be lifted when the government ends its COVID-19 emergency declarations on 11th May. Djokovic has not competed at the back-to-back -back ATP Masters event in Indian Wells and Miami, two of the biggest tournaments of the ATP calendar and known as the Sunshine Double since 2019.
Last Friday, Florida Senators Rick Scott and Marco Rubio wrote a letter to U.S. President Joe Biden urging him to grant the waiver request. And with that, we reach the end of tonight's news at 10. In our top story, Prime Minister wants evaluation tasks to be returned to civil servants to reduce dependency on consultants. Don't forget to join us again tomorrow afternoon on TV2 for more updates. You can also stream it on RTM Click's website and mobile app or on Berita RTM's YouTube channel. Till then, Malaysia, I'm Shuhaida Arifin. Good night and goodbye.